Thank you, good morning. Um, it is so great to be here with you guys and share a little bit of time. The three things that I wanna share with you guys are number one is always be yourself. It sounds like a really simple thing to do, right? But we stereotype, we put people in boxes, and, but I think when you are truly who you are, you will find something that you're passionate about. For me, it was basketball. For you guys, I don't know what it is, but you find that thing that you're passionate about by being yourself. And I think when you find that, you use it to make the world a better place. Okay, so the first thing, always be yourself and you'll find your passion. The second thing, once you find that thing, could be music, it could be sports, it could be you wanna be a doctor, I don't know. Have a vision for where you can go because you will never get anywhere in life unless you picture yourself successful and don't be afraid of it. I guarantee if you ask every Olympic gold medalist, if they saw themselves getting that medal first, they would say yes. I know for myself, I pictured it before it happened. So dream big, you guys. One of my favorite quotes is a dream that's too big is just the right size. Don't let people keep you down. Have a big vision of where you can go. First, be yourself. Second, have a vision of where you can go. And third, you have to embrace life's obstacles, okay? Because they're gonna come your way. Who's, who's ever failed? Okay, I hope, I hope every hand comes, <laughs> you know? Teachers will be honest with me. Yes, this happened. Because either you're gonna fail, you're gonna get knocked down, things are gonna happen in your life that are gonna try to derail you from your goals and your dreams. You have to embrace those obstacles, those failures, because they're meant to make you better people, okay? So embrace obstacles, all right? So, number one, be yourself. How many of you guys know what you wanna be when you grow up? Okay. I'm just gonna ask a couple of you. I'm, I'm impressed. Yes. Epidemiologist. Epidemiologist. I can barely say it. That's awesome. Yes. A novelist. Awesome. Yeah. A real estate developer in Marin County. That I haven't heard that one yet. That's awesome. Yes. A mom. You know what I'm telling you? Being a mom is awesome. I got it. I have to tell you. Yes. A what? A particle physicist. Okay, a particle physicist, my gosh, yes. A marine biologist, excellent. A teacher, hey teachers, are you hearing this? We have a teacher in the house, yes. Okay, yes. A singer. A track runner, awesome. How come, where are the guy's hands? Yes. A mechanical engineer, okay, hands down, hands down, hands down. Raise your hand if you've been to AZ camp, to our basketball camp. Okay, I need some help if you've been to camp. Because sometimes, you guys, when I'm talking to kids, you know, not 100% are always listening. So when we yell out eyes, everybody claps twice. Can you guys help me out with that? Eyes, <laughs> eyes. Okay, because if I find you guys are wandering off a little, because teachers, do they pay attention all the time? Yes, they do, oh yes, they. So I'm gonna yell, eyes, eyes. Okay, so when I was a kid, and I grew up in East Tennessee, I wanted to be a forest ranger. And back in Tennessee, we had career day. So I was in, I think, kindergarten, and our parents were invited to come to career day to see what you know, their children were dreaming about becoming. Well, I wanted to be a forest ranger. I grew up you know, just kind of near the woods and whatnot, and that's just what I wanted to be. So my mom came to career day with me and the teacher was going around the classroom and one by one, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, when it was my turn, she said, Jennifer, what do you want to be when you grow up? And my mom's sitting in the back of the classroom, so proud of me. She thinks it's great that I'm going to be a forest ranger. Teacher said, well, you know, Jennifer, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, well, I want to be a nurse because nurses can help people. And I had this long answer as to why I now wanted to become a nurse. So my mom's in the back of the room, and I was a good kid, you guys. I told my mom just about everything. And she said, okay, I guess, you know, she's five or six years old. She's probably changed her mind. That's, that's normal. So we got home later that afternoon, and my mom was really excited. She said, congratulations. And I said, what for? And she said, well, you're going to be a nurse. We're going to have a nurse in the family. That's great. And she goes, but, you know, when did you change your mind? And I said, mom, 
And she said I was kind of angry about it. I said, Mom, I don't want to be a nurse. I want to be a forest ranger. That's what I told you. And she said, well, then I don't understand. Why would you lie to all of your classmates? And I said, but Mom, you and I both know that girls can't be forest rangers. Girls are supposed to be, and you guys, in this day and age, that has changed like crazy. But I had this whole list of things that I thought were professions for girls, another list of things that I thought were professions for boys. I had already determined at the age of five what I really wanted to do and be and what I thought other people wanted me to do and be. And we do that, you guys, whether you're a boy, girl, black, white, regardless, we still have those stereotypes that keep us down. And I think the greatest thing that you can do is be true to yourself and true to who you are. Now, we got home later that day, too, and my mom, you guys, my mom was mad at me. Have you guys ever had that look from your mom like, she's mad, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, she, she, you guys, she gave me that look. And listen to me, I will never forget this. She gave me the greatest lesson of my life. She said, I don't want to ever hear you say anything like that again. Never limit yourself. You can do and become anything. You can do and become anything. Really? OK, thank you. But it's, it's a powerful message. And if you're getting that from home, that's awesome. If you're getting it from your teachers, which I'm sure you are, that's awesome. And if there's one thing you take from me today, is that you can do and become anything. Now, I didn't become a forest ranger. Basketball became my thing. How many of you love basketball? How many of you love sports? Any sport. How many of you love music? So, so you guys all have something that you really like. So find that thing that you love, find that thing you're passionate about, and go for it. And once I fell in love with basketball, it opened up the world for me. I ended up getting a scholarship to play basketball at Stanford because I followed my passion, okay? So be yourself, find your passion, then have a vision of where you can go. Who, who knows about vision, why it's important to have a vision? Why is it important to have, get, put your hand up, if, and I don't want a silly answer, I, I need a good answer. Why is vision important? Yes? Because then you have motivation. Why else, in the back there? So you can see, yes, so you can see where you can go, yes? You have a goal to reach for. Yeah. If you don't know where you want to be, how are you going to know where to go? That's a good one. Last one. You have to believe that you want, that you want to get there, and you have to picture yourself there, or else you're not going to get yeah. there. Yeah. You yes, you have to know that you want to go there, and by picturing it, that's going to help you. So having a vision is vitally important. Now, I have a story for you about vision. I was recruited out of high school to go to a lot of different colleges. And I have to tell you that when I was recruited by Stanford, how many of you guys know that Stanford women's basketball is really good? Okay, great, one of the greatest programs. My coach just won 1,000 wins. So one of the greatest programs in the country. But when they recruited me, the team had won like four games the year before. So growing up in, in Tennessee, I was used to winning. I mean, we, we won everything. And so I got a letter from Stanford, and you guys are going to be shocked at this because of where you're growing up. I didn't know where Stanford was. Okay, I had no idea. So I got a letter from Stanford, and my dad said, oh, my God, you got a letter from Stanford University. And I said, well, are they good at basketball? And he said, well, no. And I said, well, then I'm not going there. And he said, but their academics are awesome. Like, if you have a chance to get a scholarship to Stanford University, you could be set for the rest of your life. I think this is something that you need to look at. So I listened to him, but I wasn't really considering it because I thought, I, I want to go to the University of Tennessee or Ohio State or Vanderbilt, some of these schools that are really good in women's basketball. So I decided to go out to Stanford on a visit, and I thought, well, this is nice. I mean, it's beautiful. It's pretty cool. Um, long story short, I ended up making the decision. I met the coach, and, and you know, she was promising to build a program, and I thought, yeah, right, I don't, no one cares about basketball here, but you know, maybe we can do it. So I took the leap of faith went across the country, out to Stanford, and I remember warming up for my first game. How many of you guys have been to Maples Pavilion at Stanford? Anyone? It holds, holds about 8,000 people. So I'm warming up for the game, and I'm looking around the arena, and you guys, there was no one there. And 
I kind of hit one of my teammates. I said, well, when do the fans come? She goes, we don't have fans. I said, you guys don't have any fans? No one comes to games? She goes, well, if somebody's family's in town, no, you know, no one cares. Now, contrast that with growing up in East Tennessee. We had 10,000 people at our state tournament game. So I go from that, where everyone loves girls and women's basketball, go to Stanford, and nobody cared. Now, about halfway through my freshman year, I think we were about 500, maybe a little bit less, but for me that was pretty bad. I thought about quitting and transferring and going back to the University of Tennessee. Who's thought about quitting something before? Okay, so almost everybody. Okay, so after one of our games, one of our home games, we had lost, gotten beat pretty badly, and I'm thinking about quitting. So I sat in the empty arena, everybody, not many people, but you know, our, my teammates had cleared out, everybody was gone, and I'm sitting there by myself thinking, do I stay or do I go? And I was, yeah, do I stay or do I go, right, the song? So I had, a, I, had a, I had a serious decision to make, a life decision. Now, I'm not a quitter, but I was really close. Well, my coach happened to still be there. She walked out of their locker room, and she came and stood beside me. And she said, I want you to look around. And I kind of joked with her. I was like, yeah, there's no one here. There was no one here during our games, and no one cares. And she said, no, I want you to look around, and I want you to see my vision. I want you to picture this place sold out, full of fans. And I want you to picture us winning the national championship by your senior year. Can you do that? Now, imagine me. I'm, I'm thinking, this woman is crazy. Th there's no way. But then the more she started talking, she said, Jennifer, I need you as a leader to see this vision. Because if you don't, we're not going anywhere. I'm going to recruit better players. We're going to do everything we can as a staff to get better. But I need you to see this vision. And I need you to commit to getting better. So imagine, within three years, we were selling out our home games, 8,000 fans a game. Can you imagine going from no fans to 8,000 fans a game? And guys, we had more fans than the, the men's team. And it, was, it was unbelievable. 8,000 fans a game, and we won the national championship my senior year. Unbelievably powerful experience. It's why I took over the program at USF, because I wasn't afraid of losing. I wasn't afraid of trying something that seemed impossible. But we did it because of her vision. And the irony is we won at the University of Tennessee 20 minutes from where I grew up. So it was, a, it was a, an incredible experience. So whatever you guys want out of life, picture it first. And I guarantee if you fight through it, fight through it, and you make yourself better, those of you that said you were on a losing team before, don't blame anybody, blame yourself. Get better, get better, get better, get better, and work for your goals. Because nothing in life is going to come easy. You have to work for it, okay? First, be yourself, find your passion. Second, have a vision for where you can go. Third, embrace obstacles, okay? I tried out for the Olympic team in 1992. And I had been the starting point guard on the world championship team in 1990. So everyone told us from the 1990 team that by being world champions, it was really a formality to even have to try out for the 92 team, that you would pretty much automatically be on the Olympic team. And it became my dream after my Forest Ranger deal, you know, that I wanted to be an Olympian. And I remember watching the Olympics on television. And I don't know if any of you guys have had this experience, but you see the Olympians getting their gold medals and you think, it's just, it's powerful. And, and I knew that that's something that I wanted. So I'd worked, you know, since I was a little kid, getting to this point of trying out for the team. The way the tryouts work is they invite 200 of the best athletes in the country to go to Colorado Springs to, to try out for the team. And every day, the trials last about a week, every day players get cut, get sent home. Okay, so you can imagine, I always use the analogy of like an American Idol thing is like, You've got all the judges, and they, they just, I mean, they trash you if you're not good enough. And you're, you have to, every day after the trials, you go and you hope your name is still on the list. So it's, it's pretty brutal. Um, so anyway, I made it down. I made it through the whole week, made it down to the last night. And everybody was congratulating me. Like, you did great. You're going to be an Olympian. This is your dream. This is awesome. Congratulations. So I made it down to the last 15, and 12 players make the team. 
so they, you know, made us wait overnight, and, and I thought, I mean, I even slept. Have you guys ever been kind of nervous about something, maybe a big, t and you just can't sleep? I actually slept. So the next morning, I got a call to go down and, and talk with the coach, and so and I'm feeling pretty confident walking down to her office, and as soon as I opened her door and I saw her face, I just, I knew it. I was the last player sent home. And I, you guys, I was devastated. I didn't think I would ever play basketball again. I mean, it was, talk about just deflated, not working out, and I didn't know what to do. I mean, I, I had graduated from college, this degree from Stanford, but I had no money, no job, I didn't know what to do, and my dream since I was a kid was just taken away from me. So I thought, I just, I don't know, I flew home to Tennessee and, you know, went back with my parents for a little bit, and. I had a contract to play that fall in France, so, I was, so this is, well, I was out of college two years, and I thought, well, I don't really know what else to do, so I'm going I'm to go. And you guys, it was like magic, and this is why I'm telling you, find your passion and don't let go of it. As soon as I stepped back out on the court, it was literally like there's a line. I stepped back out on the court, and I realized this is mine. This is my dream. I can't let somebody take this away from me. I'm going to try it again. So pretty soon, one year turned into two, turned into three, turned into four, I went back and tried out again in 96. And it was the hardest thing that I've ever done. Probably other than taking over USF, it's probably the hardest thing I've ever done is to go back and put myself in the same situation again. Because do you know how many good basketball players there are in the United States? Unbelievable. So I could have been easily cut again, but you guys, I was so much better this go around. I had worked so hard that no one was going to take this away from me. So this time, I made the team. And it was incredible because I got to be part of one of the greatest teams. And now, since that team, there have been six gold medals in the Olympics. But I got to be part of the beginning of all that. I got to be part of the first group to play in the WNBA, so playing in the women's NBA here in the United States. The games were in Atlanta. So we're in the United States, and it was an incredible experience. When we walked up and into the stadium, and there's just a sea of athletes from all over the world, different races, different, it was just a melting pot. And it was incredible. It was one of the most powerful experiences ever. And I think the Olympics are still one of those beautiful things that really brings people together. So just absolutely incredible. But when I look back on my experience, the 1992 team, won a bronze medal. And in 1996, we won gold. You guys saw that on the, on the video. So the lesson for me in that is that when something doesn't work out in my life, doesn't go my way, I think that was just my bronze. And my gold medal is somewhere else. And I believe that you guys have probably heard this saying from your parents, maybe your teachers, that when a door closes, a window opens if you're willing to see it, if you're willing to see the possibility, because I believe that's how life is. But you've got to be open to it. You can't get down and out when things don't go your way. You've got to pick yourself back up, and you keep going. And that's, that's the beauty of life, is you keep going, you keep going, and you'll find your joy when you do that. Because life is it's a journey. It doesn't end. I mean, if I had stopped at a gold medal, I wouldn't have kept going. But you keep going. Okay, so number one, be yourself. Find your passion. Number two, have a vision for where you can go. And number three, embrace obstacles. I used to always say, like, handle failure, but embrace it, because why not? Okay, a lot of people want to just get down and out, but don't, okay? And there's one other thing that I want to talk to you guys about, kind of on, on a little bit of a different note, and then I'll take some questions, is, you know, we're living in a time right now where... You know, if you, you look at the media, you look at the news, you, you know, kind of see things that are going on, and we have to be good to each other. Like, we have to love one another, we have to accept one another, accept differences, and I guarantee there's some of you in here probably that make fun of other, other people. You should stop, because it's ridiculous. Like, you guys, you guys should be in an environment and create an environment where you're building one another up. And I guarantee if I ask each one of you, who do you like to be around? You like to be around that person that's building you up. 
at our camps, we talk about we don't do put downs, we only do put ups. So I think one of the best things you guys, be, be who you want to see in other people. Because the world right now, you guys, is, it, it's, it's not necessarily the greatest place on the outside. But what you guys have in here could be really, really special if you'll be good to one another. And one of the greatest things for me about basketball and about team sports is that you get to do it with people that you love. You get to do it with people that you can build up and you play together. And if, you know, a lot of you guys said you're Warriors fans, you know what the greatest thing, and I know those guys, I know Steve Curry, he's a friend of mine. What's great about them is they truly love one another and they're good guys. And that's why I think they're such, they're such great role models, I think, for all of us. So when you watch them play, and I'm sure that you guys, you get that vibe from them anyway, because I think that's why people like them, but is they, they treat people well. And I think it's just the golden rule. Treat others as you want to be treated, okay? How did I get my team to believe that they could go from being the worst team to the best team? It probably was the hardest part of my job because I knew what it took because I'd been through it, but I had to daily paint a picture of what it took. And then I had to build trust with my team because I'm making them work harder than they've ever worked in their lives. I mean, they're running sprints until they're exhausted. They're shooting more shots until their arm's about to fall off because they had never prepared like that, but they trusted me and they, they believed I knew what I was doing. But the coolest thing where the belief really took flight was when I no longer was the one painting the picture. That they were the ones saying, we're gonna win the WCC championship and we're gonna do it. And that's why I always tell kids, young people, the ball, literally, not to use a you know, cliche here, but the ball really is in your court. It's not your coaches. It's, it's, I know this having been a player on a championship team and a coach, I feel like I had more control as a player because I could influence my team. As a coach, you're kind of, you're like up here and your team is here. Um, but that's a fantastic question. You guys, and belief, belief is everything. Yeah. Can you come up here? Will you model it? For, will you put it on for me? Okay. You can come on up. Let's come up here. What is your name? Nirvan. Say it again. Nirvan. 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 Okay. It's a powerful experience, and I'll never forget. Come on up here. Don't be shy. Is he shy? Yeah. Oh, kind of? Okay. That's all right. You're up here with me now. Okay. So before the Olympics, our coach um, brought us to, it was the Georgia Dome is where we played. And the Georgia Dome is actually a football field, and it hadn't been turned into what was to be, this is about eight months before the Olympics, what was going to be half for basketball and half for gymnastics. So they converted the Georgia Dome into a gym and into a gymnastics, whatever you call it. So down on the field, she played a video of Olympians getting their gold medals. My, one of my teammates already had two Olympic gold medals, so she had her bring her gold medals down on the field with us. So here we are on a football field that was gonna be turned into a basketball court. And we had these gold medals. And it was extremely powerful for us to see what was to come. And we, you know, who, you're not guaranteed anything. But once we saw my teammates' gold medals, it was as if like, this is gonna happen. And it was an amazing experience. So your question was perfect because it does, it makes you want to share it, it makes you want other people to have the same experience. And the thing I, when I do bring this with me, is the thing I like for people to know is there's a lot of failure in this. There's a lot of tough times. You know, if, if you ask anyone that's, that's been in any sort of successful position, you probably have more failures, more obstacles along the way to getting that, which makes it that much better. If that was easy, like if this was easy, would I even bring, bother bringing it? No, I wouldn't. So I appreciate you modeling it for me. Okay, thank you. You guys to take away is being good to one another. Can, every, can you guys do that? I mean, it's simple, but don't be, don't be that jerk. Like be, be people that build people up. It's gonna take you a lot further. Okay, and I'm going to pass it back to your principal.